Hi, welcome to my lab. Believe or not, this year Mermaid Repaint is inspired by Valheim. For those who don't know, Valheim is a survival game inspired by Norse mythology. Ha, so you think that it will be Norse Madrigal or some sort of Valkyrie inspired mermaid? Uh, no, even if that would be really cool. My inspiration is more... twisted. One of many reasons why Valheim is so successful is when you get the mechanics, the things you can do in this game are limited only by your imagination. You can fight monsters, explore the world, but don't go close to the world edge because you will die. I already checked it. Build cool house, craft weapons or go fishing, which allow you to catch this adorable anglerfish. You can put it on the wall or cook from it fish and bread. Just look how beautiful she is. Yes, this is my inspiration. I am going to make a mermaid who is dressed like anglerfish in bread because she thinks that it is freaking adorable. <laughs> for my base, I took the standard G1 Laguna Blue doll. She is always perfect base for a mermaid. Without any delay, let's prep her in my murine spa, where each doll is treated like a queen. It's been a while since our specialist took care of a doll, and we are starting from our standard bolt cut, followed by gentle decapitation. Abort mission! Abort mission! Okay, my specialist panicked, but sometimes this crap happens, especially when head is not warm enough and full of glue. I tried to remove the neck back with pliers and it worked, but I had to boil the head in boiling water for a couple of minutes. Now we can back to the murine spa and continue the treatment with brain extraction. We finished with deep cleaning acetone face mask to remove all her past. Urine spa. Everything for those who want a new start. I started to trim the plastic seams on the leg when it hit me. Why on earth I am wasting my time for it since I will be removing these legs anyway? <laughs> so I did this. Hence I got after my reverse mermaid repaint, I'm one step closer from making a patchwork doll. I have got this pre-wefted hair with nice pink gradient, which will fit my design. I painted her scalp neon pink, so any possible gap in reroute shouldn't be visible. I added Liquitex matte medium to prevent the chipping. Yes, I am going for the reroute. I could just glue them, but they are too long for my concept, so reroute it is. The problem with this hair is that it is so-called fake ombre. It is a mix of bright and darker strands, with darker ones being shorter, which gives this gradient effect. It will make her style messier after rerouting, but I didn't care about it then, being sure that it shouldn't interfere with her style I have got in my mind. Oh, so naive. I cut one strand, fold it in half, put it to my rerouting tool and stab it into head. Now I just have to repeat it one million times. I give her these green accents in holes where original Laguna doll had got her blue strands. <laughs> okay, so during rerouting I broke the needle. I am very clumsy and I am breaking a lot of rooting needles. It is okay, if it happens to you, just prepare a new one. For this you need needles with big eye. I have got only this largest one, unfortunately. I like to cover the eye hole with paper tape and then gently break it using pliers. The cut piece can fly away, which makes me freak out that I will not be able to find it, then I stomp on it, get hurt, go to hospital and die, so I prefer to keep it safe. A ready needle can be installed in scalper handle and your homemade rerouting tool is done. It turned out that this needle is too big for this head and it started to tear the vinyl. No wonder I had one needle of this size already prepared. I found that I have got some regular sewing needles with big enough hole. I prepared it like previously and continued rerouting of camera. If you wonder, I broke maybe 5 more needles until I finished this head and I am not feeling bad about myself at all. One season of Clone Wars later, I got this. 
I squeezed inside a generous amount of fabric glue and let it dry for a couple days. Ok, time to repair the broken neckpack. I did this before the Lightful posted her neckpack repairment video, way more informative than what I am going to show, so I got it my way and my method is slightly different. I removed cracked pieces and made a patch out of Warbler thermoplastic. Warbler is obviously visible, so I shaped it to the design detail, which will imitate gills later. To install the fish tail, I drilled the hole in her pelvis. My drill is not the startiest. And put inside the wire, which I twisted for better stability. Next, I started to cover it with fabric to build flesh, which will be also soft to allow posability. I've seen Delightful doing this for her Tamara Tiny Hoof doll. She was referring Kalpi Creations method, so that's a chain of inspiration. I covered her tail with kitchen foil and masking tape to make a pattern, which then I cut with seam allowances from faux leather. So pink and hollow. I sew the letter halfway through and flip it to the right side. The rest will be sewn later directly on the doll. Laguna's arms are made from blue transparent vinyl, so to reveal it I remove the paint with acetone. I saw this done by Mr. Super Custom and it looks so cool, so I had to do this. I did also something like this to my ghost fairy. I sanded her body and started to add some beads to her chest to cover the forbidden boobs, but later I removed it. It looked very cool, but I just realized that it was not the right moment for them. Next, I heated up small sausage from Warbler Thermoplastic. I tried to cut it with my knife, but then this happened. Zero to one for Warbler this time. I heated up remaining pieces and put them to her shoulders. Her head is full of glue. Her head is full of glue, so I cut the neck back for easier head installment, and she is ready for some paints. I started from painting her arms with transparent blue paint. I wanted to keep the transparent effect, but change a shade of it. But my airbrush didn't work as smoothly as it should. Uh... At some point I decided to leave it as it is, hoping that these splashes of paint will give some more visual interest and texture. When it dried, I started to spray her full body and I finally noticed. My airbrush was so clogged that it barely worked. Finally, after two hours of cleaning, it worked as it should. I chose for her skin color this dark metallic paint. Later, I realized that metallic finish is not the best idea for base skin tone, but I am a magpie, I like shiny. Her base skin color is very dark now, so to give it dimension, I decided to place highlights rather than shadows. I was sick of cleaning my airbrush that day, so I applied them using sponge, which was a bad idea. <laughs> sponge have got tendency to bring the shininess up from metallic paints, which is cool, but not always what we want. Here, I didn't want it. At some point, I painted over this mess with base color to do everything down and start over again. I tried to add some more shadows with black transparent paint, but overall I stayed mostly with base color with minimal contouring. Metallic paint gives the dimension anyway.
Here comes the ugly face. This was my the most difficult face-up ever. Last time I was so intimidated when I was painting Marinette's face-up when it turned out to be piece of cake, while here I was completely chilled out expecting it to be fun experience, but it turned out to be a challenge. I wanted to make a dark skinned doll for a very long time and while I have few not pale dolls in my portfolio, none of them have got skin as dark as this one. Usually with light skin dolls, skin is the lightest part of the face and everything else like lips and eyes are darker. Here is the opposite, her skin is dark and shiny and I cannot make her features any darker. So instead of going darker, I decided to go lighter and use bold neon colors. Keeping in mind that her hair is neon pink with green accents, I used a lot of pinks and greens with a bit of yellow for her eyes. I also give her black scleras, just because. For all these colors I used white base coat to help them pop out without need to make thousands of layers. Her costume will be very light and beige, so I wanted her to stand out. Time to finish off her body. I glued to her pelvis flesh material with hot glue and sew it to her her leather tail using ladder stitch. When I reached the top, I clipped the material on the sides and make it more fitting to her body and cut the axis. Then I sewed the cuts on the sides, making them skin fitting. To finish it up, I glued the back with hot glue. I was afraid that sharp transition between her human and fish body will be awkward, but I like it that way. I removed her hair from the protective bonnet and she looks wild. Setting down this mess will be problematic. The easiest way to deal with this mess is pouring the boiling water over the doll's head, but it would activate warbler on her body. So I tied her hair with rubber bands and gently set them down with hair dryer, being careful enough to not hit the warbler. And it looks like it worked! For now I tied her hair in low ponytail, shortened a bit and cut some flyaways. An even length of hair starts to be a problem. Ok, so now it's time to glue these pearls to her boobies. I sewed to her tail some loose strands of fabric to make her tail thin. I know that it doesn't look impressive, but not all mermaid has to have giant tail fin and this will fit better to her costume. Speaking of costume, time for the main event! I got this cute fluffy material in two colors of beige. The light one will be the body and the black fins. I sew parts of bottom fin good sides in, flip it back and add two rows of top stitches to give it nice shape. Yeah. 
Next, I sew main body, putting inside bottom fin and sides fin on the sides, which will serve as sleeves. Now it's time to attach back fin. I pinched it in place and sew it off camera. This is an anglerfish costume and they have a characteristic luminescent organ called ESCA. To make it, I sew soft aluminium wire to the light beige material and then attach it to the costume above the back fin. I sew to its end white pom-pom. I also add black pom-poms for the eyes. They look so goofy, I love it. For nice finish, I made a lining out of this muddy green fabric. I forgot to make a cut for sleeves in lining, so they are fake now. <laughs> Mouth is still not stable, so to give it shape, I sewed to it aluminium wire for scaffold and covered it with darker fabric for nicer finish. Something is missing. Yes, long sharp teeth. I cut long triangles from ivory felt and sew it to the mouth. <laughs> it wasn't in my plans, but now it looks like leech. I've been chosen as this little fella's new companion. I graciously accept your friendship. <laughs> I still wasn't a fan of her hairstyle. It was getting very fuzzy when I was taking her in and out of her costume, so I decided to set it more in place. First, I took a strand from the side and twisted around it gold wire. Then I pinned it to the other side of her head. Then I made a net out of the wire and off camera decorated it with rhinestones. So pretty! And with that, she's complete! I think that she turned out really pretty. Even if my main goal was to make mermaid in costume, I wanted her to look pretty with and without her baked anglerfish outfit. I had so much fun with this concept. The only thing I would change is to give her some more Nordic features in her body paint to tie more her Valheim inspiration. I didn't thought about it then, but maybe next time. And I have a surprise for you, she shines in black light. and glows in the dark. Oh, it's amazing! And this is all for today. See you next time. Bye!